This device here has helped heal my inner child. Playing indie games on here has taken me back to the feel of some old school arcade games I used to play. But what's better than playing indies with an arcade controller is playing actual retro games with one. We can sit here and talk about the Marios and Pac-Man and Mortal Kombat. And while I do enjoy those, I wanted to discuss underrated retro games. Of course, if you're already into retro gaming, most people will recognize these games. But in my opinion, they're still underrated. Before I get into this list, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps and stay tuned for more content like this. Starting off with Gauntlet. Released in 1985, this game lived in my memories for most of my teen years and I could not for the life of me remember the name until it finally came to me as an adult and I've loved revisiting ever since. This is one of the pieces of media that got me into the whole fantasy genre. The axe wielder, the wizard, the archer, the variety of characters were a nice touch but it's the memories of playing this with my cousins and sisters is what really stood out to me. And while the gameplay isn't anything mind-breaking or revolutionary, it is still fun to revisit and just mindlessly defeat the ghouls and the ghosts and all the enemies and just kind of go through the levels. And it's probably why I like Vampire Survivor so much is because it reminds me of this game. Next we have Snow Bros released in 1990. It's another game that I have nostalgia for. When I was a kid we'd visit family in Mexico in a very small town where most roads were still just dirt. But for some reason, every local corner store had an arcade machine or two. Most of them were the 1201 kind of game, but some had branded ones that had a specific title only. And I remember spending a whole summer playing this with the local kids. For some reason, there were a lot of people that sold snacks and sodas and tortillas from their house that doubled as a store. And this game was one of the more popular games in a specific street corner. But the nostalgia of playing with the neighborhood kids and trying to see who got the best scores and doubling up as well and choosing a partner, that's what really made this game stand out for me. Zexies or Zexes, don't know how to say that, uh, was released in 1988. This is a game that I didn't discover until I was an adult, but when I did, man did I love it. It's a fun platformer shooter with some fun power-ups, but my favorite thing was the vehicles. Getting to fly around and shooting and switching between them is so fun. It's a game that I could have seen being made as an indie game in the modern era. Next is Bubble Bobble, released in 1986. This is probably the most recognizable franchise in this list. The little dinosaur mascots are pretty iconic, but this game where they originated from will always be one of my favorite retros. Shooting bubbles and then stomping the enemies was always fun to me, and as a kid I loved just mashing the arcade button and shooting the bubbles. There was something really fun and satisfying to it. It's not the best, most polished game out there, but the memories that I have of it are forever. And we have Legacy of the Wizard released in 1987. This is another one that I didn't discover until I was a bit older and I wondered why this franchise wasn't a bigger deal and why I hadn't heard of it till then. It's such a fun platforming projectile shooting little adventure with a fantasy realm atmosphere and you can choose between different characters with their own different projectiles which make it feel a little more different each playthrough depending on who you choose. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video.